Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction, uh, Professor Gieser. Um, so first of all, uh, thank you for uh, having me here in this uh, panel. And uh, I'm very happy to present you a European project that is uh, ongoing. It's a Horizon 2020 project. It's a collaborative project. I have to uh, really stress that uh, characteristic of the project. It's uh, not my research. Uh, only part of it is mine. So I don't want to take full credit for what we've achieved so far. Um, um, mainly, um, we're in the middle of the project, so the results we have so far are preliminary. I can explain you a bit what the different work packages are, who my colleagues are. The name Sonia Livingstone has already been dropped by Professor Albury. She's one of the collaborators uh, on uh, the project, uh, one of um, the uh, uh, 13 partners and one of yeah, the fifth representatives of the 15 countries involved in this uh, um, cross-country European uh, project. And the aim of it is yeah, to come up with a better measurement of digital uh, skills, as the title says, and also look a bit um, at, yeah, different groups because we know that uh, youth, it has already been mentioned, uh, is a very heterogeneous concept. We look at children from 12 to 17 uh, years of age um, in six focal countries. Uh, I'll come uh, to uh, the choice of it uh, in a minute. Um, but we looked at uh, the DAISY um, measurement, uh, the digital uh, uh, economy and society index, and then you have a ranking. It's a very complex ranking of the countries in Europe. And we took a few countries that were ranked highly, uh, some others in the middle and some others uh, rather uh, low. And also the size mattered. We have a few big countries. We have Germany, uh, our partner from Munich, for instance, who is uh, representing the, the, the school survey in, in Germany. Uh, we have Poland. Uh, we have uh, Estonia as a small country. Uh, we have... Uh, Italy uh, and, and Portugal also, and um, so also Finland. So you see some, some north, some south, so geographical uh, uh, varieties also uh, taken care of. So the, the current challenges, uh, it's been said in the introduction also by Professor Perner, of course, yeah, Transformation is the key. Digital transformation is the key point of departure for Y skills. And the research uh, in Europe so far shows that there is a serious uh, skills uh, deficit among Europe's children and adolescents. Uh, this was uh, found by, among other sources, the European Training Foundation. Too many of them lack the digital skills to succeed in increasingly complex uh, economies. Um, hence, educating young uh, European uh, citizens to be proficient with digital technologies is uh, paramount. Um, but clearly, beyond being a simple tool, digital technology, ICTs, have become a factor for social inclusion. That was kind of the point of departure for youth uh, skills. Another uh, aspect, uh, because we also did like you in uh, the project, uh, a systematic evidence uh, review and, and looking at what's there and what's uh, uh, yeah, a blind spot, so to speak, what are the blind spots? And we found as one of the blind spots, the underdevelopment of measures for digital skills, testing uh, mostly around the softer non-technical uh, skills. So we thought there is a fresh approach uh, needed um, another point uh, that we stressed in the application was that technology can have positive and negative effects on well-being. And the research that we found, and actually uh, Sonia and colleagues from LSC did a systematic evidence uh, review on the link uh, between uh, antecedents of digital skills and, 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 and also looking at, at consequences of digital skills. And there were only 11 studies that she came up with with her team that dealt with the link, um, digital skills and then uh, well-being. So there is some room for new uh, research. Um, 
not only uh, the results were not conclusive, uh, they were largely based on cross-sectional uh, studies. So uh, not a lot of longitudinal research has been done uh, so far. Um, and also when uh, we look at the literature on well-being, there was always a focus on a single well-being dimension and uh, a lot was also uh, focused on the negative outcomes. So we thought we need positive and negative outcomes, we need uh, different dimensions, uh, the social dimensions, psychological, mental uh, and, and uh, physical dimensions of well-being. Uh, so that was... Uh, well, what we think uh, is a more comprehensive and more inclusive approach to well-being. This is the aim of Y skills. Uh, we try to enhance and we seek to maximize long-term positive impact of uh, digital technology on different dimensions of well-being for all children uh, by stimulating resilience. So the issue of coping with uh, adversity is an important one. You cannot uh, become resilient. That's the idea if you haven't uh, been in contact with yeah, risky situations. Uh, so how to avoid harm. So risk is one thing, but it's part of life. That was one of the main outcomes also of EU Kids Online in the two surveys that we've done so far. Um, we see that uh, kids, for instance, who use more uh, internet or more uh, social media or more digital media will run into more risks. But the question is, uh, do they experience more harm? And when can we uh, avoid uh, them experiencing harm and how can we uh, make them more uh, resilient and more successful in coping with uh, these uh, risks that they uh, inevitably will uh, run into. Uh, so we think this, and this is the whole thing, uh, the crux uh, for Y skills, we think that through the enhancement of digital skills, also the well-being might increase. Um, so here we have um, uh, a slide with some uh, more um, yeah, uh, objectives, just to pick a few, um, extensive knowledge, uh, of course, uh, better measurement, key for Y skills. And uh, for that, we want to develop and test uh, evidence-based uh, a model that is uh, both explanatory and also a foresight uh, model um, explaining the impacts of uh, digital technology and uh, uh, digital skills on, as I said, uh, these four uh, dimensions of uh, well-being. But we only, uh, well, we have the school service, I'll come to that. Um, we have three waves, we're in the middle of the second wave at the moment, we experienced Ooh. lots of problems, lots of issues last year because of COVID, the pandemic, uh, that of course amplified uh, inequalities that already existed. Um, lots of different uh, contexts in Europe, uh, different moments. Uh, the school surveys were planned in the spring of 21. Uh, we ended up having all data in November 21. So uh, uh, this, this was already an issue, uh, but well, our uh, EC officer was quite uh, um, lenient and, 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 and understood why we have so many uh, problems. We're in the midst of the second uh, wave now and a data collection uh, goes a lot smoother. But now in Poland, for instance, we have volatility of classes with the new Ukrainian refugees uh, coming in. Um, so um, as the social network of the child is an important element for us, we don't look only at the individual child, we also look at the network and whom they see as the best friend in the class context. So it's really the formal context of the class that is our point of departure in the school survey. Um, we see that, okay, in the second wave, the class is a different entity altogether. There's new kids uh, that that have joined the class. So lots of challenges uh, to deal with, um, given that, yeah, we have the three waves, uh, the volatility, the pandemic, the crisis, and also we, we found um, a different attitude of parents with regard to uh, informed consent and active consent. Lots of parents were no longer or were not uh, willing to fill out the forms. And especially we deal with kids 12 to 17. Our first wave dealt with kids aged 12 to 15. So you see in many countries below 16, uh, you have to have active consent. 
of the parents. So uh, this was a main issue in Finland, for instance, and we have all uh, experts in all of these countries uh, on uh, surveys. So this was for them, like uh, for Veronica Kalmusch in, in, in Tartu University, for uh, the, the people in, in Portugal, also Christina uh, Ponte and her team, they had never experienced such a reticent uh, attitude. And Another thing, uh, this was European research, and for instance, in Poland, the headmasters, the schoolmasters uh, uh, had a problem with, for instance, just to mention our gender uh, dimensions. You know, we had uh, boy, girl, and then we had uh, um, don't know, uh, don't want to tell. Uh, so we had a few options, and this was a no go for uh, headmasters in Poland. So just to mention that uh, the realities from the European Union um, imposed on us uh, in a way, because, uh, well, also, yeah, these, this is practical. Um, this is practice now uh, was not acceptable in uh, some of our countries in, in Europe. So very interesting and very diverging uh, contexts. Um, so we looked also at at-risk children. Uh, this is part of our objective three. We uh, looked at children in an at-risk situation, for instance, exposed to uh, disinformation, misinformation, or information disorder as a global term. And we looked at, for instance, uh, children who had experienced issues, mental issues, in relationship with their exposure to uh, uh, digital media. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, interviewing uh, children with uh, um, uh, refugee uh, background, refugee children, and uh, also are observing children in public libraries, because we see, uh, for instance, in Flanders, um, but also in other countries, the public library is a spot uh, where uh, the librarian takes a new role, an information uh, broker role, uh, also to um, be a buffer, act as a buffer, uh, against inequality. So we're, we are observing children from lower SES backgrounds um, in, in their um, relationship with uh, digital technology in, in a public library context. Um, so of course, in the end, we want to um, formulate recommendations for uh, Europe and for our stakeholders. We have a lot of stakeholders. We have, for instance, the European Schoolnet as one of our partners. So they represent indirectly all the ministries of education of the countries in, in, in Europe. And uh, we have also a list of national contact points. So as soon as we have something, we have infographics and, and blogs, etc., on our website. We also try to, uh, and this will be one of the uh, um, tasks ahead. We try to, uh, we will try to um, make our reports understandable for kids also, because of course the main uh, audience is not children, uh, but it's explicitly demanded, and it's also part of our um, goals. It's explicitly demanded by the European Commission now to also generate impact and 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 and. Uh, also address our outputs uh, to children directly. So this is the model. This is the model that we uh, use, uh, the Y skills model that is very heavily um, influenced by the EU kids uh, model um, and also by uh, the differential susceptibility to uh, media effects model, the model designed by um, uh, Valkenburg and uh, Jochen. So we have, of course, the antecedents, the individual social characteristics, uh, the country uh, aspects and, and cultural characteristics, characteristics that uh, go with it. So from that perspective, roughly, uh, we have a more uh, yeah, ecological systems approach. You know, Bronfenbrenner, uh, a bit uh, vaguely, uh, is also uh, one of our um, sources of inspiration. We have then the ICT environment, with the risks and opportunities and the uses in the middle. And of course, our attention goes to skills as a mediator. Uh, and then we look at uh, well being as an outcome variable at the different dimensions of uh, well being. In the short term, wave one uh, and, and, and wave two, and the medium term in uh, the third wave. Uh, and uh, as we have our uh, team from Vienna, 
Caillou Boomgaarden and his team, they will uh, adopt um, agent-based modeling so that we are able, uh, based on the different uh, points of measurement and also uh, the social uh, network elements that we have been asking in the school, uh, the school survey, so that we can sort of predict how the child, how the uh, youngster will evolve in further years into uh, early adulthood. So agent-based modeling, this was also something that the commission uh, uh, wanted uh, to have some prospect, so to, to have a perspective uh, model. Um, uh, our Finnish colleagues look into brain imaging, and, and there we also look at uh, uh, cross-country comparisons. So the, the Belgian team and the, the Finnish team have some uh, fMRI going on, and um, in two other countries in uh, the team, we are starting, the Finnish and, and the Belgian team will start um, a diary uh, method, uh, online diary method, um, experience sampling method, um, three measurements also, so that we can see more um, similarities and, and differences within a child. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'll also look at mood changes and uh, mood associations with um, moments in the day, in the morning, in the evening. We have like five different moments of uh, contact uh, over a period of two weeks, and we repeat that um, three times uh, in the coming two years. So the backbone is the school survey three times of uh, exposure three times of encounters. And um, we have a few uh, satellite projects uh, going on, but um, looking at uh, specific groups with vulnerabilities and um, uh, youth in um, an at-risk situation uh, is uh, one of the main uh, work packages. So the strengths I think are the comprehensive focus and, and, and yeah, also looking at uh, this multidimensional uh, well-being concept, skills, looking at uh, at-risk groups, looking at temporal effects uh, of the uh, digital environment of well-being, and also looking at the social network, the personal network of uh, the child. So the measurement, I will go into the measurement uh, in a few um, uh, seconds. How did we approach that? Basically, that was our LSE team, Ellen Helsper and her colleague from Twente University, Alexander van Dursen, who looked into uh, a new um, yeah, measurement instrument that they validated, that they tested and validated uh, last summer, and that we are now only starting to um, roll out as part of the school survey. So we have like 6,000 N, so about 1,000 uh, per country. And in each country we'll have now alongside the second uh, wave, um, a small N of 100 uh, kids, as varied, as diverse as possible, um, uh, that we will uh, work with on performance tests. So uh, we have on, on the one hand, the uh, skills questions in the questionnaire, but these are mainly perceptions of skills. What do these kids think they can and know? And then uh, there will, uh, there's also a knowledge question uh, so far. So that's so far the only uh, yes or no, right or wrong answer that they could give. Um, but now the interesting and the, the exciting uh, part will come uh, in the shape of these performance tests. What can they uh, do? And of course, what uh, can they actually uh, perform? Is that in any way, uh, yeah, um, uh, coinciding uh, and confirming or um, not at all with uh, the perception, their own perception, the self-perception of their uh, uh, skills. These are the partners. So Munich is the partner for Germany. Um, Multi-method approach. Um, yeah, here you see the different methods that are being used. And the last, the co-design uh, jams, I really uh, expect a lot uh, from that. We haven't done them uh, yet. It's um, 
mostly nearing the end uh, of the project. Uh, so as of next year, we will start with these co-design uh, sessions and we'll also work uh, with designers on um, uh, a child-friendly presentation and uh, representation of, of other results. Uh, because it's obvious that our, our website will not be uh, looked at by children uh, in the first uh, place. Here we have uh, yeah, the dependency of the different uh, work uh, packages. And I'll look into the Youth Digital Skills Indicator. Uh, so that's uh, an instrument that has been tested and validated and hopefully uh, can now, uh, after we did uh, and we will do, uh, the, the, uh, the questionnaires in, 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 the, in the different schools uh, will then be uh, used more generally, maybe through our partner, the, U, the UN Schoolnet, uh, and alongside also the performance uh, tests. So this is uh, what we hope for, because that would mean uh, impact. Um, so if you look at the YDSI, uh, the Youth Digital Skills Indicator. It's uh, now <clears throat> uh, a validated instrument. Um, and it's a tool that's been tested, uh, which consists of uh, 31 um, items that are distributed over digital skills and digital knowledge questions. So digital skills, perception of digital skills and knowledge, this is, yeah right or wrong uh, questions that we ask the children. Um, so um, 31 items and based on uh, also a literature review, um, we came to this framework uh, and uh, in this framework, we identified four dimensions that constitute the digital uh, skills uh, or digital uh, literacy. So the technical and operational skills that are most uh, measured uh, across uh, literature, then the information navigation and processing skills, the interaction and communication um, dimension of digital skills, and the content creation and production of digital skills. We also, uh, in the questionnaire, have questions on dispositions, attitudes, and motivation, and on confidence, a slider question, how confident do you feel uh, in terms of using uh, ICT? But basically, these four dimensions uh, constitute uh, the questions, the skills, the digital skills-related questions in the school questionnaire. And Across the board, so horizontal, we have uh, two aspects. We distinguish the critical kind of questions um, in the sense, um, do you know how to do certain things uh, uh, online? Uh, and we have the functional uh, questions, the functional types in the sense, can you do certain things? So that's, this was the way we worded. Can you do uh, or do you know how to do? Um, so this was, uh, yeah, the Likert scale here with uh, the, the different uh, options. Um, not at all true for me. Uh, and I do understand what you mean by this or don't want to answer. Uh, and here we have the different questions. So the 31 uh, questions divided over the four dimensions. So for instance, let's take uh, the content creation, for instance, content creation and production. I know how to create something which combines different digital media, for instance, photo, music, video, GIF. I know how to edit existing digital images, music and video. I know how to ensure that many people will see what I put online. I know how to change the things I put online depending on how other people react to it. I know how to distinguish sponsored and non-sponsored content online, for instance, in a video or a social media post. I know how to reference and use content covered by copyright. But once again, it's their uh, perception of their uh, skill uh, profile. We had also digital knowledge. So in fact, uh, four dimensions or types of digital skills uh, and, and both critical and, and functional uh, uh, elements uh, are, or dimensions or, or yeah, four types and, and, and two horizontal dimension, one might uh, um, formulate it that way. And alongside, we have also the digital knowledge items. A few questions uh, where we tested their knowledge. So, that's all we have so far. So not to uh, have the expectations too high for now. Um, for instance, uh, the, the question was in terms of information navigation, the first result 
uh, when I search, when I do a search, is always the best information source, right or wrong. Or um, in terms of interaction and communication, um, whether I like or share a post can have a negative impact on others. Using hashtags increases the visibility of a post. Or in terms of content creation, another thing, another question, companies pay ordinary people to use their products in videos and content they create. So these were like uh, the questions the children had to um, uh, respond to. So these are just the first, very first, because yeah, as I said, we had some delay due to the pandemic and, and yeah, different uh, regimes of schools being open, uh, not being able to access the schools, having uh, uh, the mixture of uh, having to have the children online, but always with the teacher there, always in groups, so never having uh, individual uh, surveys. Uh, so only since November we have the data. So in total, we have now uh, a bit uh, more than 6,000 adolescents. You can see here uh, the divisions. Uh, almost all had uh, access to internet uh, at home. Uh, we had... Um, um, a category, a group of 166 uh, kids out of 6,000 uh, uh, that were, uh, that uh, mentioned they were or referred to non-binary. And it's really interesting. This is a group we re I really think we should follow more uh, because yeah, in the coming waves also, this group overall was highest in terms of digital knowledge on all the knowledge questions, and uh, also turned out to have the best results in terms of perceived uh, skills. But they had the lowest uh, profile, the lowest answers with regard to well-being. So they didn't feel uh, happy, they didn't feel satisfied, they didn't, they had a lot of problems. So they're very uh, digitally proficient. So um, yeah, but they apparently compensated uh, this negative uh, um, yeah, well-being status with uh, being digitally very active. Um, so skills in this case and well-being were not at all uh, Imagine this was a contrary, uh, really, uh, it, I think it's a very uh, interesting and, and yeah, kind of uh, worrisome uh, uh, first result. Uh, so we need to look into uh, this uh, group a lot more, but yeah, it's a it's small group, uh, 166. There's not a lot of uh, um, tests, a lot of methods, of course, we can apply to such a small group. Uh, infographics, we have them in all of the countries, um, languages uh, on Zenodo, uh, so Zenodo was like the, the, the platform that we use because uh, everything that's done in Europe needs to be open access, so of course our researchers want to publish in high impact journals, but that doesn't coincide with the DORA principles, uh, very important. We need to have everything uh, open access. So Zenodo is a wonderful um, yeah, platform to um, um, yeah, uh, open up your questionnaires. That's what we did. We have the questionnaires uh, in all of the languages and also the, the first results, uh, the data set, um, et cetera, uh, will come. Uh, public already in June. So we only have a, a, a window, a, a very small window of working with our own data uh, of six months, basically. So uh, uh, in June, the first wave will be there, but of course, the most interesting part will follow with the second wave and the third wave to have a longitudinal uh, perspective. So here you can see the top four uh, activities for uh, uh, European children, communicate with friends, listen to music, communicate with parents also, and play games on uh, the computer or phone. Uh, these are the, the, the top four learning activities, lower percentages there. Use the internet or phone to learn something new, use the internet or phone to practice something. Um, and then uh, the least indicated daily activities uh, was for instance, create and edit. So uh, being creative and having uh, production, uh, digital content of some sort, music, videos, etc., quite low. Um, yeah, look for new friends or contacts, also uh, least indicated daily activity, uh, or uh, look up some information uh, in terms of digital or mental health or mental difficulties, psychological well-being. 
So we have some sort of a ladder. That was also a notion that Sonia used in uh, Sonia Livingstone in the EU Kids Online um, uh, research. Um, so here, for instance, we see um, the different, uh, the four different dimensions with the percentages, um, communication and interaction, technological and operational, content creation and production, information and navigation. And you have the F and the Cs on the left uh, hand side of the bars, the horizontal bars uh, saying, okay, this is a question related to a functional uh, dimension of a skill, or this is a, a critical dimension of a, a skill. So 52%, uh, I know how to use advanced search functions in search engines, uh, then it goes up the lower we go on the slide, uh, the more, uh, the higher the percentages. And then on this slide, uh, you see higher percentages, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, on communication and interaction, for instance, uh, the orange bars, and also the distinction there, what is critical, for instance, I know when I should mute myself or disable a video in online interactions, that's a communication, we saw as a communication dimension of a digital skill and um, um, a critical uh, dimension. And then depending on the situation, I know which medium or tool to use to communicate with someone, make a call, for instance, that's a functional aspect. So that's how we look into it. Uh, and of course, we'll have uh, many more um, articles to come. We promised 15. We have two so far, so there's a lot of work to be done yet. But our Finnish team, for instance, uh, Katarina Salmelo Aro the, from, from, from uh, Helsinki is with her team looking now at the latent, uh, latent profile analysis. And I, uh, yeah, I think it's very promising in, in Oslo, we'll meet in May and uh, present some of the more sophisticated uh, results. <clears throat> but that's what we uh, have so far. Here you see that division, boys, girls and non-binary. So everywhere on the perceived skills, uh, they were highest. And uh, this is uh, about the correct score on the digital knowledge items. So the objective measure, the only so far we have because the performance tests are still in the making um, or they are developed, but uh, actually in Germany, uh, in the Munich schools now, uh, this is the week uh, they are starting to uh, um, use uh, the performance tests. So here you see also that this non-binary group uh, was actually, um, yeah, having the highest uh, percentages of correct answers on our questions. Here is a, 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 a yeah, preliminary uh, hierarchical linear regression with misinformation risks. So for instance, just to give you an example, we had a bunch of a set of uh, misinformation risks that we um, identified. So I'll give you an example of um, some of the risks. For instance, um, I spent too much money on an in-app purchase uh, or uh, in online games, for instance, that was a risk. Uh, and then they had to say on a Likert scale of uh, five possibilities, never that happened to me over the past year, a few times it happened to me at least every month, at least every week, daily or almost daily or not sure. So um, when we now look, and, and there's uh, plenty of risks that we, uh, or situations that we presented to them, um, another one, for instance, I shared information that I later found out to be a hoax, or I shared information from social media without reading the whole article, um, <clears throat> or somebody used my password to access my information on the internet or to pretend to be me online. Uh, did it happen to you or not? What do we see in our third model here? That only communication the communication aspect, the communication uh, dimension of digital skill did something uh, actually to um, mitigate the risk uh, that uh, the youth ran into. Um, so, well, we, we see a few differences here. The first model between gender, um, girls and other, and age, and age uh, <clears throat> didn't uh, turn out to be uh, in the 12 to 15 uh, year group, um, um, significant predictor. Uh, we saw a few differences across the countries. 
more uh, risks in Poland, uh, much less in Estonia. And then we have these digital skills. And okay, if you run a, a correlation uh, uh, analysis and, and you look at the correlation metrics, you see high correlations among the different digital skills. But when you look at what dimension of skills does something to mitigate uh, risks in terms of misinformation, uh, we see that communication, communication skills within that set of uh, digital skills is the only thing that does something substantially. So kids who have communication skills uh, and use them to ask information, and it makes sense if you have uh, run into uh, an experience such as I spent too much money on an in-app um, or, um, or a purchase, um, or I uh, spent too much time on online games, that if you ask, um, you, you go for advice uh, to, uh, to a peer or, um, or um, a significant other, that it helps. So that, so far, um, our, uh, yeah, not so, um, positive uh, and uh, straightforward um, uh, results of uh, what digital skills do, uh, for instance, to um, avoid, mitigate, uh, to be a buffer when it comes to exposure to uh, risks. And here uh, we only look at misinformation uh, risks. We also look at qualitative studies and, and focus on our, um, um, yeah, uh, kids that may be not the reference kids that all of the research or most of the research uh, deals with. Um, so different uh, types of kids. And of course, groups uh, is also a different, uh, um, yeah, difficult notion uh, perhaps because yeah, these groups are of course um, heterogeneous. Uh, let us look first at uh, something that we developed, uh, a platform to um, examine um, um, misinformation, uh, and exposure to, um, information disorders. Um, yeah, misinformation and disinformation, I'm sure you all are aware of uh, the difference, of course. The misinformation, um, yeah, there's no intention of uh, spreading uh, false news like this one here, um, um, spreading the news that dolphins were showing up in the canals in Venice. Okay, uh, some people believed it and then 35,000 people liked it, uh, but yeah, not much harm involved. This one, uh, yeah, involves a lot more harm here. Uh, apparently in Iran, 700 people died after ingesting toxic methanol, erroneously uh, thinking it can cure uh, them from the coronavirus. Um, and then, yeah, disinformation, very different from misinformation. You have the intention when you disinform, you know it's not true, but you say it anyway. So the goal of that uh, specific um, uh, exercise uh, in uh, the Y skills uh, was to look at Flemish kids, Czech kids and Finnish kids. And we took these three countries because they um, are um, on the DAISY index, which is an index uh, used in Europe a lot uh, for all kinds of access and use uh, and, and infrastructure um, uh, items that deal with uh, digital uh, technology. Finland is highest. Belgium is in the middle and the Czech Republic is, is much uh, more below on the list. So we looked at uh, these three because of course it's uh, nowhere uh, confirmed that this uh, uh, distinction and, and ranking of uh, countries also uh, works for children. Um, so 13 and 15 year olds, 80, so it's small, a very small um, exploration, uh, 80 kids per country. Uh, of course, they were exposed to the survey, the school survey, the same skill uh, questions and um, news exposure. And uh, one week after uh, the uh, four exposure moments uh, over two days uh, in, in collaboration with the, with the school teacher also, um, we, we had three messages for them, three news messages per exposure moment. And there were stories that uh, were um, having 
um, cyber hate elements, cyber hate based on identity, weight, or violence. Uh, so identity based, weight based, violence based, hybrid cyber hate. And some were true, some were false uh, statements. We manipulated the news source, for instance, uh, to know do they know a difference between public service media, for instance, and uh, commercial media. Uh, we manipulated pictures. Uh, we also uh, added some misspellings in the language. We wanted to know, do they see that? Did they remark that? And was it uh, for them uh, influential to decide this is credible, this is authentic, this is uh, um, yeah, false? Uh, and we, um, with um, our engineers, um, we um, uh, developed an app, an app, a news feed containing news articles uh, on social media posts plus uh, questions uh, relating to these credibility assessments. Uh, and of course, we um, developed content. Um, uh, there was also a room for aftercare and discussion of uh, the experiences of the children during uh, an exposure uh, phase, so questions on use consumption, but also on their understanding and their awareness of the media logic and their influence. Um, yeah, the influence of their understanding or lack of understanding on uh, what they thought was a credible information, a credible piece of information. And we also went over uh, with them uh, over their um, profile. So we, we discussed with them uh, the results of uh, the test. So these were like uh, the stimuli that we developed. Um, so for instance, the, the, the one in the middle, news 24-7. Um, school in Brussels apparently took an unwriter's approach, that was the story, and forever changed the lives of two of its students. They got expelled for harmless pranks and teasing of their classmate. The school claims it was a case of cyberbullying and immediately expelled them. How little does it take for your child to get expelled based on an innocent joke? So um, they had to uh, decide this is uh, how the app looked like. It was uh, accessible from their mobile phone, their smartphone. Uh, we made sure everybody had a smartphone. We brought also a smartphone so that they could easily access uh, the application. Um, first moment, second moment, fourth moment, and then uh, stimulus. How well, with the question, how well do these words reflect the news you just saw? Uh, and then is it accurate? Is it authentic, believable? Sorry. Sorry, Lien, yes. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but we are running a bit out of time. So please, um, we just be, should be aware of this. Yeah, thank you yes, sorry for are. interrupting. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. So I'm, I'm nearing the end um, because I don't have any results for this yet. The results are um, in, uh, yeah are going to be presented in, in May in Oslo. And just maybe mentioning that we also work with refugee and migrant children. And uh, this is with the, the group from Miria Georgiou from LSE. Um, so in three countries, Belgium, uh, the UK and Greece. And we, uh, because of uh, linguistic difficulties, of course, the language, um, um, yeah, limited expression um, in, in language, although we work with interpreters, uh, Arabic, Farsi, uh, but still we work with um, icons and um, an asset uh, mapping device that we developed with a designer uh, so that uh, around this map, this asset map, we could talk with them and they could visualize and vocalize in a different way than just language, which could uh, be difficult for these 15 year olds um, yeah, in a refugee center or uh, some were uh, interviewed in an institution, others were interviewed uh, in, in a guest family. Um, so this was our way to overcome that linguistic uh, barrier. And the idea was to uh, make them talk about what they uh, think would be ideal for them, uh, ideal that dig digital technologies for them uh, to use. So that's it. Thank you. Sorry uh, for not uh, keeping uh, track of time, really. <laughs>